Hello everyone again. Uh, we are starting a webinar about uh, precast concrete, how to apply this for the concrete slabs. Um, okay, there should be Johan with me today, but he was unable to connect to speak, so I will just say a few words about this uh, presentation in English, and then if you will need some consultancy or help, you can, you can write your questions in Swedish or just contact us, uh, contact Johan, I'll give you address at the end and then you can uh, yeah, ha <clears throat> have your answers. So Agacad is the company who creates these solutions, we, we are developers of different add-ons for Revit. So we sell it worldwide to different countries and our mission is to create BIM together with our users and create solutions based on their experience. Uh, AAC is our Autodesk Gold, Gold partner and uh, they provide CAD and BIM solutions uh, for the build industry in, in your country. So you can contact them, they are our partners and they can give you advice or help on solutions. Uh, our promise to clients is to reduce stress, to create continuously our solutions and keep the support all the time. Uh, today I will talk about precast concrete solution. So what you can do with this add-on for Revit is that you can create elements, you can insert details, sort elements and create drawings. So it might be applied for different kind of elements. Um, yeah, a few words about it in presentation slides, but we can continue here uh, the, some examples of client stories, so uh, you can find these full articles in our webpage if you are interested to see how they, what is the experience of other users and how they, uh, how these solutions help them to accomplish the projects. Um, so, yeah, you will see how to create panels today, how to insert details, and uh, how to create drawings. Uh, so, okay, a few words about this webinar, but I think you will see it live, so it will be good. So, um, next we will have a session for the walls, for the precast walls and frames, so we will let, have them later. Um, these are preliminary dates, but probably uh, it will be something around this, uh, so just keep following. Okay, this precast concrete software, inside it has five tools. One is for the floor panel layout, I will show this today. So smart walls is for the walls to split into the panels. Then, So I will not talk about this one today, I will talk about smart details, how to insert cuts or details. Then sort mark, um, just automatically sort elements and create drawings with smart assemblies. And we can switch over to the live demo. Okay, good. So in this Revit window, as I said, you can see some uh, tools for BIM Dark over here. So you can install some tools from the store tab and you can use them uh, in your project. Over here I have a floor panel layout, so I will start using it. Uh, in my sample project you see the floor is created, some beams and columns and now I want to split this one single floor into the panels so I will use this floor panel solution. Uh, so I have three tabs here, one is for the floor supports, if I select this one uh, you see a couple of commands here to add support so uh, I will show you what's been the purpose of these commands so I will select this one to add support select the floor and then I click on the beams. Actually, it's better visible now that uh, uh, when I clicked on the beams on the supports, it could be grid lines or walls or beams, uh, I have added some split lines to this floor. So I, I want to have some regions for the slabs, so that's why I'm adding these supports and at the same time splitting lines. So I will do a couple of these again over here, so I want to have it here, here, and 
at these areas. So I want to make sure my floor is like this because uh, my slabs will go in these directions. So I will just close this one. Uh, there are some <clears throat> add, modify, and update, of course, uh, functionality, but uh, you can analyze this through your trial period and see how it works on your project. Now, in the panel layout, I have also a lot of commands, but actually what's maybe the most important in the beginning is the panel layout settings is when you define the splitting size, the direction from where you want to split it, and then you can start uh, planning your layout of your slabs. So um, I can create panel layout for selected floor um, region. So if I do it like this, it will add uh, splitting lines, not the panels yet, but the splitting lines. So I can I can plan my uh, my floor layout, or I can click on on one region, but I can add these lines in in all areas. Then if something goes wrong, I can uh, change the direction, uh, the update or modify functionality. So I'll just click on the different uh, edge of the region and it will change my direction. I can also click on modify and let's say change the, uh, the size of my panels, which I want to create later. But currently now I'm, I'm just making my plans so I can, you know, change whatever I want here and for the selected region. Okay, so now then, let's say I'm happy with my planning, I can create panels. So in the last tab I have panel settings. In panel settings, uh, I define the support width, let's say for the wall, for the structural framing element. So when I create the panel, it will move over my panel by 80 millimeters over the support. Then I have parameters for the floors because now I will create floors. So I need some parameters to be added to the schedules, right? So I can assign these uh, for the panel width and length. I can assign what kind of parameters do I want to use. Then what type of floor do I want to create? So let's say I can create uh, just a, this is the type of the floor I have in my project. Then these are holes which comes with together with the software. Um, so when I make my settings, I can save them and then I can create panels for the selected floor face. So if I'll click on this line, so it will give me all of these panels. So now I have uh, a, a floor created. So it's 265, it's just a regular floor with one layer. Uh, so I select it to be like this. Uh, then I have these two parameters calculated based on uh, my settings, so I can make this scalable, right? And yeah, so I can create that, let's say over here and over here again. If I'll go to the level two, maybe just to show you that now my floor is created. Here is the edge of the beam, so I have eight millimeters just like in my settings, so it's uh, already extended to the right position. So let me just get back to 3D view. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, okay, another place. Maybe I'll just change some settings here. I want to create this one. I don't want to create any holes. Okay, I'll leave it. Um, just another one and just save it and then create panels let's say for this region so you see now other floors are created they don't have any um, holes in it but let me just show you how to add them later I will add some uh, cuts for these floors now okay I'll change some settings again um, 
no holes again and just save it and just create panels for your floor face so just do it like this and now I will have these floors over here so um, again different type right but what I wanted to show you that uh, these holes right which I inserted uh, they are simple families which you can edit you can change the shape of it uh, software comes together with some library of the uh, holes but you can create your own holes in, in, let's say in this folder or just define where where your families are located so you can make uh, the same holes as your local manufacturers okay so when I created some of the panels I can do other stuff with um, smart detail solution so let me just drag it from here um, Okay, smart details, what's, what, what's the solution here? Uh, this solution allows you to create details just based on, on the configuration settings. So you can insert them on different categories of elements. So in my case, I will use for the floors. I have created a couple of configurations. And what can I insert here? Um, I can define line-based elements or point-based elements where and how they should be inserted. Let's say on top, in this case, I want to place on top this line-based uh, family. I can select it from the list or from the other families which I have in my project. And then I just select to place it on the top. And just based on this picture, I describe how to um, how to array them right in, in one direction in other direction I want to have maximum spacing like this I want to offset from the from the ends of my floor so I define the settings and then I can use this configuration to insert my details so if I will filter a couple of a couple of these floors so let me just select the floors okay and insert details and select that configuration, filigree and slab, so just insert them. And I have these elements created here. Of course, I can modify them, I can update them. Let's say if I'll click on modify and, and change, let's say, the distance between them, right? So if I'll click on update, so I can cha make changes to one selected element or update based on global configurations so it depends on your needs right so I don't know if I will add it like this again I can quickly make changes to the to my element right then another example is they have here different type of floors right uh, insert details so I used actually the floors to create uh, let's say double T slabs right I think it's quite good because you can uh, use area reinforcement for the top reinforcement, right? So in this case, let's say I just placed a couple of point-based details on top of my uh, slab, then uh, the cut out alongside, cut out at the support location. So it's pretty good. Then let's say, okay some of these floors maybe I can show you something here um, floors selected okay I will deselect this big one enter details and hollow core slabs of course this is just a floor so it depends what type of family you create right so in, in my case I just placed this kind of family this is just a regular line based family with void inside so I just inserted smart details has possibility to cut the uh, floor and so on so <clears throat> these elements are inserted then I can modify and I let's say I have some predefined settings to insert some additional cuts 
ah okay so these are on the wrong side so I will just flip them and update okay so it should be like this <clears throat> at least I want it to be like this then on this side let's say I will just do a bit of changes here um, okay just a different size of it um, insert details again uh, this kind of cut so again it depends on your configurations and what you want to create right so let's say in this case I have created um, this kind of flap just by inserting some cuts the shape of cut and then again this shape this shape this cut it can read information from your uh, slab it can read width of slab and adopt to the size of your slab and so on so again uh, it's a really powerful solution to insert your details a um, couple of examples are here let's say these are not precast but anyway composite uh, sheets could be placed because this is just a simple uh, line based family right then let's say okay I added some reinforcement the Revit functionality here here is some uh, cut cut out for the slabs like this then um, yeah different kind of configuration here just for the bubble deck slabs right you can create again some point based details distribute based on the rules and you can have your flaps then let me go to level 2 and and I will sort elements because I want to have some mark values right for the slabs so um, I can select floors um, then I will select element numbering and I will write a number value to the mark. Now I have configuration window where I can save my configuration with a different name and what can I do here? I can group elements based on the instance or type parameter. So let's say if they have type, different type name, uh, then uh, it will start numbering from the beginning. So I don't select here anything. Over here I selected that if I have different length, if I have different volume or width or type name, then number of elements will be different. Then I selected to sort them based on coordinates. Um, and then I want to add this number, start numbering from 1, add some prefix, click on OK, and it will renumber all of your elements, right? So some of them maybe will have some same mark values. But okay, let me just tag maybe these floors so it will be easier to see. Uh, floor tags over here, horizontal. Okay, let me just click like this. So now probably I have my marking of my floors. So if it's different length, if it's different with, so my floors will be renumbered and let's say this one it has different cuts so probably it's because different volume and then I added different number <coughs> so this again this solution could be applied for the selected elements for all the floors for the walls for the any kind of elements um, okay couple of examples here and at the end you can create sharp drawings for this. So for the sharp drawings, I will use smart assemblies. Uh, you can use solutions from the tools for BIM Doc, or you can just add them to the tab and drag it like this, like I did previously. And then you can use all the commands from here. Um, but in this tools for BIM Doc, you can, uh, if any update is available for this solution, then you will find it because we release updates like every three or four months you will find new update new features for smart assembly smart details and all the other uh, solutions 
So what do we have here? We have some configurations where we can define how our uh, drawings should be created and what do we want to create. So let me just open configuration window. Okay, in this configuration window I can select, let's say, one of my configurations for the slabs. And we see that I want to create these views, select the type of views. Uh, I can define if I want to rotate any of my views, then uh, if I want to have view template, what kind of view template, what do I want to see in selected view, so I can define that here. Um, yeah, then dimension rules, so what are dimension rules? Dimension rules are described here, so you have some settings, again you can save these, uh, you have settings how to dimension main element, uh, how to dimension openings in, in the main element, how to dimension metal details, concrete details, rebars, how to place nodes, what kind of nodes should be included, what to dimension and what not to dimension. Right, so we have some different di dimension rules. Uh, over here some gravity point visibility options. Um, you have some flipping options of the view to insert gravity point, yeah, to rotate views, uh, all of the views. Then you can create uh, isolated assembly view or you can create model view. So it depends on what are you creating. So maybe if, uh, you need to show some surrounding elements, so you can do that. Then schedules, the schedules, the yeah, again, I can create material part list or schedule based on different schedule templates. Then sheets, so the sheets, uh, again, I can place views on the sheet and use that sheet as a template. So I don't need to drag my views uh, manually to the sheet. So let me just create a couple of assemblies and just show you how it works. So. So for this I will select two floors, let's say, right? Um, oh, sorry, let me check if I have mark values over here. Okay, so I have it. Yeah. So I will select this floor and this floor. Uh, okay, so now I have selected two floors. Uh, I will click on create, create assemblies. And now from the list, I have to select the configuration which I want to use. So this one, um, again, Smart Assemblies works with different categories which are described here. And I will create. So now it will create defined views. It will create the assembly based on the mark name of the element. Then it will add all the hosted details if you have them in this element. It will make schedules and it will place the views on the sheets. Okay, so let me just go down and now you see this assembly was created and this kind of view I, I got here. So some views are placed on the sheet, the schedule table, so I have it here in one and another one looks like this. So I create these sheets. Over here another configuration was used for this one. So I had some dimensions for the cuts, right? So I have this uh, for, for the cuts, for the details, for the gravity point, for the total dimension of my slab. Uh, in plan view, in section view, for the reinforcement, uh, just all the reinforcement, uh, legend, created few types of uh, schedules, again another one with automatic dimensions. So, um, so how does it place the views on the sheet is that um, I have a template project in my computer, so I have I have it here. So this is my template project with different kind of assemblies. 
Um, and let's say this one, F1, um, let me find it over here. So I have created assembly here. I placed the views manually to the sheet. So then I'm happy with this layout. Um, in my new project, I just define that uh, this is my template project, and I want to use it, use it when I create new assemblies. So if I select this floor and click on Create Assembly and select the configuration and create it, so now it will just use the sheet layout as it is in my template project. So these details are automatically added to assembly because they are hosted to the main element. And then you can define how to dimension them. There are some special rules. Let's say I can add model lines and then dimension line will snap to them. So let me open this assembly and you see the sheet is created already and the elements are placed in the same location as it is placed in the template project. Okay, so you see some dimension for these elements, like hosted details for the gravity point, for the total dimension. Uh, so you decide what to dimension and how to dimension. Um, okay, there are more functionalities like to update, to modify their configurations, but what I wanted to show you is just the, the way it works and, and then you can explore, you can have the demos, trainings and whatever you need. Um, watch some other webinars which are dedicated to the walls or um, framing uh, columns and beams and so on. So uh, basically that's, that's it for today, what I wanted to show you. Uh, what we have in the slides is that you can get the free trial. Uh, you just should visit our web page and, and go there. And then some information about contact uh, through our partners, local partners in Sweden is AEC, so you can uh, talk to them uh, if you have any concerns about it. And that's it. That's it for today. Let me see if you have maybe some questions. You can type them. Um, if you don't have them now, you can just uh, write us email and and we will try to contact you and explain whatever questions you might have. So okay, thank you for attention and have a good day and bye-bye.